Oh, bother. <laughs>Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Reign of the Jade Dragon. I'm Yin Yang Total War, and last time we left off, we had just seized the Bridge of Heaven. Dion Wei had fought a uh, a little bit of a bloody battle, surprisingly, against just a standard garrison, and that has made us reconsider how we handle these things forward. So, we're going to combine these troops. Leader of men get that back up to a usable unit we are going to also uh diminish the role of the archer in this army well let's diminish it just a little bit no shame in being a civilian no shame in being a civilian i hear that um in doing so we're going Fight to diversify a little bit so the first thing we're going to do is get a couple juggernauts and we also need to start leaning a little bit more into uh, different kinds of units, right? So we need something that moves fast. Uh, while I am tempted to get war tigers, we are going to go with Onyx Chroman. They have been uh, pretty good at distracting and uh, chasing down units. Oh, looks like we're going to have to wait a turn for that anyway, so that's fine. While I would prefer to get some cavalry, uh, we're just, we're, we're not there yet. I want to be there. We're not there yet. Lord Magistrate reporting. And let's take a look at Jin Ding. Well, we can't really recruit for him this turn, but we will. That is coming. General. And let's get Dion Way a little divide. bit of a uh, boost, right? He's earned it. So, after that battle, I would say that his troops took the most hits. So, we're going to go for... Uh, let's... Let's wait on that. Let's give the melee troops... Some more defense and attack but mostly defense with that I would lead more effectively and actually now that I'm thinking about it that 20th slot is saved for our boy Xiao Dun who should be heading that direction where is he where'd he go uh, there he is. The Lord Magistrate stands ready. It benefits the Empire. The dragons would approve. Wow. All right, and speaking of dragons, we've got a dragon out here who needs to uh, keep sailing home. Dragon-blooded Shugunga. Serve and honor your ancestors. And I think that we could use a few more troops out here. Especially with what's about to go down in the south. And it looks like we're actually ready for our first battle of the campaign. Not of the campaign, of the episode. So, I understand he hasn't moved. Let's see what else we've got going on. Got some buildings available. We could upgrade the Bridge of Heaven, so why not? And let's upgrade Pahwa as well. Although maybe we could have upgraded Spectazuma instead, but Pahwa stands alone. We're going to need it to be strong so that it can uh, a withhold and then B push out because I'd like to get Swamp Town and the Shrine of Sotek under our uh, purview as well with the Monument of the Moon possibly coming under us we'll, we'll see what we can do with that but now that all of that is done oh 
and we apparently have unskilled uh, points. And let's actually, while we're here, Yuan Shun's song is hard for me to remember. So, let's go back into Dynasty Warriors again. It's going to be Fang Tong. And the, uh, the hat really sells it, so... We're going to make him a... Yeah, let's make him a tactician. He's been pretty good, tactically speaking. And that goes with his character as well. All right. Now, let's get back to you on bow. And Master of the declare Beach war Beach. on the Blood Hall Coven. Ridiculous. An execution. And of course it's going to be a decisive victory, but we're definitely jumping on in. So I'll see you on the battlefield. Men of Cathay, together we shall reduce these foes to a red mist. The better to water our fields and trouble our families no more. And taking a little bit of sweet vengeance on the Dark Elves who have come to Cafe before, the Jade Dragon is ready for blood. <laughs> it looks like the Dark Elves are not shy to the notion themselves as they move on forward. Of course, the Cathayan army does not even hesitate with these Dark Elves. They're going to show them exactly what happens. And it looks like we've got our Tigers moving up on the flanks as well. And the missile volleys have begun. And just what these crossbowmen need, some, oh good lord, some uh, onyx crowmen to come and ruin their day. And already they're beginning to flee from us. But it's not going to be fast enough as our tigers come in. And a short but sweet victory. I'm going to let these units uh, get massacred and I will see you back on the campaign map. And of course, that victory was decisive and nearly flawless, although we lost a handful of units. Uh, it looks like somewhat <laughs> to, uh, it looks like it was mostly to our own friendly fire, which is unfortunate. And with that decisive victory, we're going to occupy. We shall annex this. And let's see, I'd say that that fight went to the uh, flyers, so let's boost them up a little bit. My effectiveness could be increased. And next we'll have to take down 
the Blood Hall. That is going to be a bit of a fight, so... Or at least it appears to be a bit of a fight. Probably not too much looking at the garrison, but we'll see what ends up becoming of it. It'll take us just a little while to actually get to it. I believe I'll have to cross the ocean, if I'm not mistaken. Governor, an executioner. Yeah, we'll definitely have to cross the ocean to get there. First, move a mountain for me. And I do believe that that is going to be it for this turn. So let's go ahead and... Who hasn't moved? Lord Magistrate. Oh, Jin Ding. Uh, judging off of where our enemies were last reported, we'll go ahead and move on Seeking up. tactical advantage. Advance. And we have a caravan dispatch available. So... Uh, Hang Huo is ready to go again. So is King Ji Mo. But let's go ahead and send. Uh, we'll go ahead and send Hang Huo. Why not? And let's see where the best area for him to go to is. It does appear that Marienburg is going to be the most profitable. Castle Drakenhof belongs to the Legions of Nagashazar. Interesting. Let's send him to... If it's going to be the same amount of time, let's send him to the Empire once again. We must bring order to disorder. And now we can end the turn. Our armor shines. Our spirits so, glow. So, guys, I hope that you all had a pleasant weekend. I, uh, I spent most of it working, but it was nevertheless a good weekend. So, um, there is that. Things are getting a little bit more balanced on my end. But with me, it's always a, uh, it's always more of a balancing act than finding that harmony. So, <laughs> hopefully we will, uh, get back to a better place here soon but i uh let's 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 see what we've got for questions today um i don't know if i've asked this one but what is yeah what is your most missed feature of total um for me, it's going to be the real mercenaries tab, like the AOR. I was always a big fan of that, so let me know what your most missed feature is. Be that, you know, uh, the double or triple layered siege defenses from Medieval 2. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones that have gone missing. Oh, setting up watchtowers and forts, that was fun. So says Yun Bo. A trade agreement with the Thunderguts. I'll say yeah to that. Can we get more out of it? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Seven gold more. Well, it's more. But in other news, I did see that 
the old world uh, tabletop is officially coming back. I'm curious how many of you guys are uh, tabletop players. Like, how many of you played the tabletop? I didn't so much play it as I did collect it. I didn't have a community where I lived that really wanted to uh, delve into the... It just wasn't big enough. It just wasn't big enough. And so, um, while I collected them and I painted them, I never actually got to play. So, that being said, I was a huge fan of the lore. I was a, uh, I really loved like painting and um, setting my men up like they were going to do something, knowing that no one else was going to play. <laughs> But I never actually really got into the tabletop. Maybe one or two matches with friends that I forced into it, but that was about it. So, are you guys excited for the Old World's return? And if so, what army are you looking most forward to seeing? Personally, I just want to get more lore. I don't... I, I, I could see myself collecting some of the miniatures again um, and painting them up just to have on my desk, but... I can't see myself getting into the hobby like that. I, I do want to. I, I I do want to get some more miniatures though. It's been such a long time since I've actually uh, had time to purchase them. But I guess that's another good question. What what brought you into the hobby was or, or into what into this right into Total War Warhammer? Were you a Warhammer enthusiast first, or were you a Total War enthusiast? Or maybe a mix of both, like me. And the House of Din UA has fallen. That's unfortunate for them. Corsairs and Spike. No thanks. And we have gained a moderate income. That's fantastic. Love it. Um, and we've got to deal with Clan Eshin here in the next uh, eight turns. Don't know how we're going to make that happen, but we'll try to get up there. I imagine they're up at the Celestial Monastery. Uh, we could try to sail up there. Celestial but that would be General. abandoning this front, and that's not something that I really want to do. Now, looking at, uh, or speaking of the front, it looks like the Vampire Counts, or the position. Jade Vampires, have decided to uh, show up to fail. defend their territory of Shilong, so we're going to have to do something about that. I, do I really don't want to send uh, Jinding against Yue Hafeng, but it looks Check like that's going to be what happens. Again, the Emperor calls upon you. It might be a good time to uh, go ahead and set up. Food and rest is scheduled. Burning Wind Nomads don't have much for us. Neither do the Jade Custodians. But the Northern Provinces have a ton of stuff. Which pleases me greatly. So we'll actually... For Grand Cathay. I'm actually going to drop two of these guys. Nothing personal. Only logistics. And we're going to bring in a couple units of Jade Lancers. It looks like we can only afford one right now from them. I will make uh, let's see if we can get one from the Western provinces. Yes, we can. Okay, so our brother and our sister Old are Kingdom going to send us some reinforcements, which is good. A most thoughtful strategy. Obedience Meanwhile, we're going to use our own recruitment to get some more troops here to defend the bridges. So let's go with some uh, peasant horsemen hopefully that's going to be enough but we'll see next we'll probably get some more peasant archers and round it out with some uh, maybe some juggernauts some fire against the undead will probably be a great idea so hopefully they don't decide to uh, ramshackle their way up to us uh, but we'll see now, looking out here, we've got to make some, uh, we, we've got to make some moves Dragon around Papua. 
I really hate to abandon My the city, though. Let's wait until we get a village up. That way we can actually afford to move out. Who is this? Husky Guarman. Uh oh. We've got more from here. The tendrils of doom. I'm guessing that they're the ones in the monument of the moon. That's not going to be good because if I recall correctly, that would put us up against a demigod. Uh, let's see. From here, from here, from here, from here. I just passed them. Tendrils of doom. Yeah, that's a demigod. Okay, so that is a creature of ancient times. Uh, that would probably be on par with one of the dragon children. I so we've got to be careful of that. And now we've got two choices. Do we move on to uh, Hualado or do we take the blood all? I'm going to say sorcery through me that we declared war on these dark elves in order to get to Hualado. I know that it's less uh, strategically advantageous for us to ignore the blood hall, but I don't but this is Xi'an Shi we're talking about out here in the open. We have to deal with Xi'an Shi. It's, it's a must. We cannot ignore it. It has to happen. So let's start moving down south. Tell the soldiers, move. Oh, that'll be great. Let's get some grazing pastures here. Volcathe. I can visualize it. Double the practice drill. And I wonder if it wouldn't be a good time to raise some of these mercenaries. I don't know that it's really going to do what we need it to do, though. Well, I guess it could. None may refuse Cafe's call. Recruit 30 new units. Well, we did it. Inefficiency is intolerable. Check your weapons. Again. There we go. Serve from the front. And let's take a look while we're at it at our matters of state. I could do commission the artists. Your faction creates four random magic items or ancillaries. Let's do it. Perform. All right, so we've got the shield of Nangal. That's good. A giant blade. Fantastic. The Trickster's Helm. And Ascendant Celestial Armor. That's going to set us up to turn the Isle of the Crimson Skull into a uh, fortress city, which will be great for us. This is a time of... And I think we're good otherwise. Uh-oh. Forgot to move Yin Yin. Well, that wasted a turn, but we'll fix it next turn. Having her circumnavigate the globe like this is really going to help us out at the end of the day, so...
well not circumnavigate but partial navigate <laughs> a good portion of the globe If I didn't have more important things for her to do, I would actually take her up the coast all the way up the Southlands, around, down, in, and uh, back up Koresh. But we've got other stuff for her to do. I don't know if you guys have uh, really seen her model in game um, in one of my previous videos, but she is very cool. Trade agreement. Why not? So I think last time I talked about, or maybe it was the time prior, but I talked about what I had thought the end game for, or not the end game, but the storyline for Warhammer 3 was going to be. And I genuinely thought when they were talking about rescuing a god, it was going to be Sigmar. <laughs> uh, and I really felt, I really felt justified in that belief when they started coming out with the and and guys tell me if you uh if you remember this but it's it's burned into my brain when they started releasing the uh pre-announcement trailers right where they were where they were talking about uh you could see the celestial wizard and he was contemplating uh the different aspects of the stars and i was like oh man it's gonna be Sigmar. I know it's gonna be Sigmar because if we're talking, looking at it from an imperial perspective, and but honestly, I think that would have been a little bit more cool um, to really kind of flesh out Sig, like what happened to Sigmar. And some of the some some lore people probably know better than me, but when Sigmar started his journey, right when he said. Uh, I'm done being emperor. This was cool, but I've got better shit to do. Um, and he started traveling east. I feel like that opens up so much just like missing history that they could have added into this game. Um, he could have come in contact with the... Uh, he could have come in contact with Cathay and the ogres and all kinds of... Like, like they could have all had some kind of history dealing with him. Instead... Ursin just felt like it was only for Kislev, and that was just boring to me. Uh, Box of Delights. A, wi a wild-eyed alchemist proudly presents you with an ornate chest, which seems to vac vacillate? Okay, vacillate in and out of corporeality. Guys, I, I can read, I promise you. He declares that it contains purest magic distilled from several tons of warp stone and purged of all corruption. His experiment, alas, is unrepeatable, so this boon must be used wisely. Why is his experiment unrepeatable? Uh, let's see. We're definitely not going to do that. Execute the alchemist. Oh, man. So basically, he has turned warp stone into jade. And while we are not fans of Alchemist by any means, I can see the uh, issue with executing. 
right? I think that adding it to the water supply would be the best call. We need that growth, and while we don't want to have additional construction costs, our economy can handle it. And it looks like we've got ambushers. We're not going to sacrifice a grand cannon and their uh, and the crew, so of course we're going to fight them. Hopefully we can beat them back and protect our artillery. Let's get into it. And with those horns, you know something's coming in. Getting completely outmaneuvered by these Sabre Tusks. I think they're called Sabre Tusks. <laughs> and Ogre's coming in to smash our lines before we can really get set up. Not a good start. And man, they're really coming in. The Noblars are also doing some work with their uh, knife throwing skills. And it is utter chaos, my friends. But it does look like we have a section of the army that is holding strong. Thankfully, these Jade Halberdiers are, oh my goodness, ready for battle. They're not going to allow these Lead Belters to continue their reign of terror on the battlefield. And there's Manguo now. Or is it Denguo? Well, we'll find out after this battle. I think Manghua is the Dynasty Warrior character. Or 3K character, for those of you who uh, reference that more. Oh. And it seems like no one else on the battlefield has been successful except for this uh, unit accompanying Mang uh, Hang Dengua. You guys know who I'm talking about. Our leader. It does look like we are finally beginning to route some of these ogres. And we might just be able to pull this off. A really bad battle for... Uh... And they're coming back. anybody that can help our archers are focused on the lead belchers that have oh returned to the battlefield and more saber tusk oh what an awful day And these Noblars are holding strong no matter how many times we beat back the Ogres. And we have a true warrior here in our trader. But I don't think it's going to matter at the end of the day. It does appear that some of our troops are starting to rout. And with good reason they're being shelled. 
the Sabre Tusker coming in. Our archers have been routed. And it does look like this is shaping up to be a defeat, my friends. No. Any of the other houses, it would be fine, but not the house of the Jade Dragon. Where is he? Where's our leader? Guys, I'm going to let this battle play out, but it does look like we are facing defeat. So I will see you back on the campaign map. And unfortunately, an unexpected defeat. Regardless of how valiant it is, we were defeated. Our men were butchered in the past. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, we, we completely lost our entire caravan. But as... Uh, that <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes right that is how it goes um and while I do hate to end on a uh, low note that does seem to be it for this episode so as always my friends wherever you are good morning good evening and good night I'll see you back here on Friday If you made it this far into the video, I just want to say thanks for watching, especially to those of you who have been with me since the beginning. I am still having a blast and very much enjoying the formation of this community with all of you. If you have any suggestions for videos you would like to see, please let me know because I want to make even better content as we continue down this journey together. As always, if you enjoy what I'm doing here and want to support me, then you know what to do. Comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.